So hi my crop hunter here and this video today actually I don't really like to make uh, but I have to make it because I want to unload my heart and my soul because I do feel a little bit unhappy uh, about a certain topic and I simply have to uh, share it with you. Well basically what's going on? Well I'm uh, receiving every now and then some emails where people ask me um, about advice uh, of buying a microscope. No problem with that in general. But they want to buy the microscope because they want to do something called live blood analysis. Live blood analysis. Um, and they ask me for um, yeah, a microscope recommendation to do that uh, technique. And I have a problem with that. Um, I, first of all, I highly disagree with live blood analysis. I'm going to explain to you in this video what it is and why I disagree. Um, and, and so I'm a little bit in a dilemma because I, I don't, don't want to be impolite, but at the same time I don't want to recommend something that uh, essentially I don't agree with uh, for a technique that I don't agree with. So essentially I don't uh, uh, respond to those emails and um, might appear to be a little bit unfriendly or rude because of that. Um, but um, after some weeks of thinking around I said, okay, I think I'm going to make a video um, um, about this topic and, and simply share it with you. Well, what is this whole thing about life blood analysis and, and what, what are my problems here. Um, first of all, um, some ba basic background. Uh, of course it is possible and I have done so uh, to, of course it's possible to take a little bit of blood and put it under the microscope and when you do that you're able to see both the, the red and the white blood cells um, under the microscope. And um, if you have a so-called dark field microscope and you can do that by inserting a so-called dark field patch stop here um, in the stage, beneath the stage, um, or maybe you have a dark field condenser, uh, then you're able to see those uh, uh, red blood cells um, in the, um, as, as uh, bright circles um, on a dark background. The reason is, is that the corners um, of the red blood cells, they refract the light and this causes them to appear quite nicely actually, uh, to appear as, as nice uh, bright circles. And these are the red blood cells uh, that essentially carry the oxygen in our blood. Um, I highly recommend that if you have uh, a dark field filter to simply try it out yourself and then you can look at your own blood uh, under the microscope. Um, I have the following problem when people now start to use this as a form of diagnosis for medical purposes. So in other words, uh, people analyze the blood and then they, by looking at the red bl blood cells, um, at the way they move and, and some other things, they kind of in, are a, they claim that they're able to interpret that in such a way to analyze uh, whether the person has an illness, a whole range of illnesses, a whole catalog uh, they're able to, to diagnose here. And then uh, based on that, uh, they're able to give then uh, uh, recommendations on, of medication or dietary supplements and they sell, sell it to them, right? And uh, for example, I've seen some YouTube videos of, of people who have been doing that some practitioners and uh, they put the drop of, uh, of the blood of a patient under the microscope and then they explained, oh look, you have, I see way too many white blood cells. All of the white blood cells, you have some kind of inflammation somewhere. That's why there's so many white blood cells. So we got to check what's the, your problem. And I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, these are not white blood cells. These are air bubbles. Uh, these are others. They're way too large. There's some kind of other debris um, <laughs> yeah, or clusters of, 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 of red blood cells maybe. But these are not white blood cells. Yeah? Um, but uh, essentially, uh, during a session like this, uh, the patients are talked into believing that they have some kind of an illness um, and, 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 and you, this has to be then treated. I have a problem with that. Well, first of all, because uh, live blood analysis, there is absolutely no scientific evidence uh, that supports that. And quite on the contrary, we know that many of the things that are seen there are actually something that we call artifacts. That means that essentially these are structures that appear out of the preparation of the sample. Uh, so for example, dust and dirt um, is sometimes interpreted as being something meaningful, but it, the slide was simply not cleaned. Okay? Um, or things are interpreted as being bacteria and they're moving bacteria. No, but this is some kind of cell fragments that are moving because of Brownian motion. But these are not bacteria. As a matter of fact, bacteria in blood uh, at that amount that you are actually able to see it, that would be a very dangerous thing. It's called sepsis. And, I mean, yeah, you have to go into immediate treatment. Yeah. So, so what I've done is the following: done a little bit of research, 
I've got a, a couple of points here what those proponents of live blood analysis claim. Um, for example, ah yeah, <laughs> acid in blood. Um, when you put a blood under the microscope and then when you wait a little bit, then sometimes you can see that the red blood cells start to stack up like, like, like a disc. Uh, the individual discs, they start to stack up like, like, a, like coins. This is called rouleau formation. And this is a natural process that happens every time when blood uh, starts to dry up a little bit and then the cells start to stick together. And then essentially uh, what they're saying is, ah, that's a sign of acid in blood. And another uh, people are saying, well, that's a sign of a, of a weak pancreas, whatever that means to have a weak pancreas. Yeah? Uh, but then they're recommending some kind of uh, treatment for this. Yeah? Um, or for example, uric acid crystals, another thing. Um, sometimes you see crystal shape, uh, shaped structures on, on, yeah, on your sample and it's, ah, these are uric acid crystals, you've got another problem. But in reality, these are simply leftover glass pieces um, from the manufacturing process um, of the glass slide. It simply hasn't been cleaned properly. But this has absolutely no medical meaning at all. Yeah, so why are they interpreting uric acid crystals or cholesterol plaques? I mean, they've done studies that you're not even able to see that under uh, cholesterol uh, plaques and uric acid crystals under the microscope. Or parasites. Yeah, um, <laughs> it says, yeah, commonly you find the dirt and debris that is found on uh, the slide uh, interpreted as being parasites. Yeah, and uh, there's some, yeah, uh, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, um, and uh, I've also seen some of those. Uh, those uh, videos that some of those folks have published and, and uh, they're just seeing cell fragments that are moving around in Brownian motion and saying, are these are bacteria. No, these are not bacteria. Um, and if, if bacteria were present, I mean, then that would be a problem, a general problem. Then you would already know that you have a problem because you wouldn't feel healthy. I mean, I don't know, you wouldn't be even sitting there anymore, right? Yeah, and then another thing that I, I don't know, I don't know if it's, it's something for laughing or crying. Um, when red blood cells, when they start to dry up, uh, then um, the cell content shrinks and then some, some of the red blood cells start to become spiky. And what they're now saying is, is that uh, basically those spikes, that means bacteria are kind of budding off and forming from the red blood cell. What in the world? I mean, uh, yeah, this, uh, this is totally wrong. It is not possible for, for human cells to form bacteria like this. This uh, concept is completely outdated. Um, Günther Enderlein uh, from the 19th century he called this pleomorphism. Um, at that time they thought that bacteria and viruses and cell, human cells, they can change uh, to become one, can change and become another form. It's totally wrong. It's, it violates all biological laws. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, but here they're saying that the red blood cells are able to form, form, form bacteria and yeasts. Or if there are some bright spots in a red blood cell, then they're saying, yeah, there's some kind of a fermentation going on. Why, why should there be fermentation going on yeah, in a red blood cell? I mean, it's packed full with hemoglobin. Uh, yeah, I, I, it, doesn't, I, I, it doesn't even have the enzymes uh, to do fermentations. And why should it do that? I mean, humans, we're, uh, we tend to uh, respire aerobically. Yeah and not ferment things. So it, it doesn't, biologically it doesn't make sense, the whole thing. Yeah, so, and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. And the more you research you do, the more things they're actually able to find, uh, and the more diseases they're able to, to cure, uh, not cure, but uh, diagnose and so on. And I have a problem with that. Because there's not only there's no scientific basis, but because the things that, I know that the things that you see are not even the things that they claim to be. I mean, these are not bacteria that you see, these are just some kind of cell debris that, yeah, that's moving around. What are they talking about? <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, for, uh, yeah, and why am I talking about this? Yeah, because folks write me uh, in emails um, and, and comments yeah, on this topic, and so I have to respond now. And they said I'm going to make a video, right? Uh, but I want to analyze the whole thing a little bit um, more from a more basic uh, standpoint uh, as, as well. And that is, is essentially that um, in the whole concept of bl live blood analysis does not really adhere to basic scientific principles. And there are sim simply three points that I would like to make. I mean, in the natural sciences, what we have to do is, is, is if we make uh, new discoveries and if there's new evidence for something, uh, and uh, if the new evidence contradicts a theory, that we have, which is an explanation, then we have to kill the theory. We replace the theory with a better theory. So that's what you call scientific progress. Some people complain, oh, scientists, uh, they were also wrong. Yeah, that's the whole point of science, to show that old theories were wrong, to improve 
science by coming up with a new theory. That's the whole point of science, right? You know more evidence means you make a better theory. But in this case, what you have is, is you, you have some kind of an idea um, and you try to artificially maintain that idea. And even if it's proven wrong, uh, people who are adhering to it, they still try to keep this idea of lifeblood analysis alive, even though there is no, not only no evidence for it, but it's been proven wrong. <laughs> yeah? So that's the, the first thing. You kill old theories. Okay. Number two, um, it's important if you make any claim, any scientific claim, um, which is new, then you are the one that has to provide the evidence. It's not to, up to the other person to show that you are wrong. If I come up with a crazy idea, I'm going to invent a crazy idea right now. I'm going to scratch off some of my in cheek cells from the inside, put it in a slide, and I now claim that by the shape of my cheek cells, I am able to predict whether I'm going to get Alzheimer's in 30 years. It's a claim. Yeah? Then it's I who has to provide the evidence. This is the case. I can't because it's nonsense. I just invented it. Yeah? But it, I cannot say, well, you show that I am wrong. It's your job to show that I am wrong. No, I have to show that my claim is correct. And I have to provide this evidence. And in the case of live blood analysis, there is no evidence. They, they are not providing it. And the third thing is, is, if you make a scientific claim, then this claim better be in agreement with other established theories. And this whole concept that uh, bacteria and viruses and human cells, they can change shape and one can become the other form, is completely wrong. It violates the biological laws. Okay? I mean, it doesn't happen. Yeah? Um, so uh, you, you got to be really, um, I don't know, this, uh, you, careful on, on this here. Now, one of the things why uh, I, I think um, this is lifeblood analysis is so problematic is, is because it, it's the whole issue with half truths. I also want to give you two example here, examples here. I mean, if you do a little bit of research uh, again about the stacking up of, of the cells in, 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 yeah, in this rouleau, uh, rouleau formation. Um, if you do actually some research, you're actually going to find serious medical literature that actually shows that uh, some people who have certain conditions actually uh, have a higher tendency of the blood cells actually stacking up. Okay, uh, yeah. So in evidence-based medicine, yeah. So there is indeed uh, hard um, evidence that uh, for certain diseases there is a high evidence, a high tendency for them to stack up. But this does not mean that if you analyze it under the microscope, that you, uh, this is um, an indicator that you have this disease because the system is simply not standardized enough. And yeah, so you got to be careful just because uh, uh, I have a headache does not automatically mean that I have a brain tumor. Yeah? There can be hundreds of reasons why I have a headache. Yeah? And that's one thing. And the second example is, is this, yeah, because I once mentioned um, in one of my videos that a blood analysis has no diagnostic value and people criticized, yeah, but uh, you, you, you can't uh, check for parasites uh, um, yeah, um, under the microscope. For example, malaria. Yeah? Yes, that's correct, but you have to do a proper staining protocol. You have to uh, stain uh, the blood sample properly um, and then you're able to specifically detect uh, malaria. Uh, you can see the malaria plasmodium there, but this is a highly standardized procedure. Okay. This does not mean that you're simply able to put some blood under the microscope and then you're going to check around, oh, I see some kind of spiral-shaped bacteria and that's a sign that I have borreliosis. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, This is uh, so wrong on so many levels um, and uh, by playing around with those half-truths, uh, I think that's a really dangerous thing as well because people who don't um, have the experience and who don't know so much about biology, medicine and microscopy, uh, they're mixing this up and then they actually think that it's a, it's a valid procedure. I would say the following, I mean, um, if especially um, people who are in the medical field, doctors of course, um, or anyone who's giving medical advice, you have to understand that people are kind of trusting you, um, okay? Um, people are vulnerable and I think I consider it a problem if, yeah, I don't know, you, you gotta, if, uh, treat that especially careful, okay? And you, and I'm I'm not saying that people who are using live blood analysis to do diagnosis that they are deliberately misleading or deceiving. Um, I think they themselves don't know better. But then again, um, any anybody it doesn't matter if you're a doctor or if you're a health practitioner who uses live blood analysis. Every person who um, that other people trust their health, um, yeah, uh, to those people, then those they have an especially high higher moral responsibility to actually um, yeah, be, be honest about the whole thing and also to inform themselves better yeah? um, and, and to give the best possible advice. And, and, and 
Um, actually, with uh, with this type of method, um, I really have a problem with that. Okay, um, because uh, I mean, one could actually argue that I mean, who cares? <laughs> Um, I'm just saying that you've got an inflammation because I see too many white blood cells. I prescribe you some kind of herbal remedy here. Um, you're happy because you feel taken care of. I'm happy because I made some money this way. Everyone's happy, no harm done. Uh, those herbal remedies often don't have any serious side, side effects anyway, so not a big deal, okay? No harm done. One might say, yes, but not if um, those types of diagnoses are done in place um, of real medical treatment if the people actually have real, are in need of real medical treatment. So um, and I guess one of the reasons why these alternative methods are popular or becoming more popular is this could be because maybe uh, medical access is not so easy in some countries. It's expensive maybe uh, or, or the doctors don't have time and all of a sudden they go to this practitioner and they um, and, and uh, he or she spends half an hour, 45 minutes discussing uh, the, the, uh, the red blood cells on the computer screen. Okay, so they feel taken care of the patients. Okay, um, so that's also quite a little bit of a, a lot about the, the maybe the, yeah, the, the loss of contact that maybe modern medicine has uh, with the patients and then of course then practitioners and other folks are trying to fill this hole in this gap yeah well uh, yeah i just had to unload it a little bit um, i promise you that in the future i'll do again i'll talk again about microscope cameras a little bit more for right now please do leave your comments behind i just wanted like to also know what you think about the whole topic i simply had to say it because i'm confronted with these with these topics and yeah happy micro hunting Bye-bye. All the best.